This is a landscape like few others. The American Wild West. Arizona. Here, the mountains over Saguaro and its cactuses, characteristic of the region, give way to grassy golden plains stretching as far as the eye can see. But the diversity of Arizona's landscape is not only visible, it is also audible. Luke Barbaro, an ecologist, and Ansar Drill, a CNRS anthropologist, are interested in the sounds of Arizona. Over the course of their two-week mission, they will explore the area between the large city of Tucson and the Mexican border. An opportunity to meet the inhabitants and record the sounds of these landscapes so different from those in France. This project is two-pronged. Our first focus is the landscape's ecology and bioacoustics, which we use to figure out how the sounds of a landscape can characterize the state of its ecosystems. Our second goal is to gain a more sociological and anthropological perspective in order to understand how the locals hear their own environment, how it sounds to them. This region is very rich albeit dry and seemingly hostile, an exceptional fauna has developed. Arizona is known as a favorite place for bird watching. Purple-crowned hummingbirds, vermilion flycatchers, or saguaro woodpeckers. And if you listen carefully, you can even hear them. Does everybody see that one? This morning, the French anthropologist is participating in an ornithological visit in a park in the suburbs of Tucson. Does anybody's phone hear any birds? For this activity, the volunteer guide is using sound to identify the species. Today, participants are learning to use a smartphone application that recognizes bird songs. In ornithology, sound is a key tool. Sound is very important for identifying birds because each species of bird has a slightly different voice that they use to communicate with their mates and to stake out territory and to warn other birds. Their communications all have different meanings and they're distinctive. The ecologist also uses the sounds of nature. Today, he is installing a microphone in a natural reserve. He will leave it for several days in a strategic location between a stream and a hiking trail in an effort to grasp the global sound environment. We expect to record interesting things, birds, mammals, or even orthoptera. Here, we can hear a cricket chirping. There are still lots of them at this time of year. There can also be noise from people passing, even though this isn't a very busy place. For example, there's someone walking by just now. These sounds are also noteworthy. People riding their mountain bikes, walking their dogs. This is what we call a soundscape. The sum of all sounds, whether they are of biological, meteorological or human origin. Luke Barbaro uses this tool to study ecosystems. Sound is interesting because we apprehend it passively. In other words, we don't intervene in the recording itself. There is no human disturbance, no observer effect, no observation bias. All recordings are made in the same way, so it's standardized. It is also an integrative approach, since we can record sounds of both biological and anthropological origin and how they coexist. To elucidate the link between the sound environment and the inhabitants, the team has chosen to focus on a small mining town on the Mexican border, Patagonia. Here, people talk as much about the sound of the mine as that of birds. It's always difficult to get people to talk about sound, because unlike sight, it's one of the senses that we aren't really conscious of. Generally, the first thing I'm told about is nuisances. When I mention the mine and sound, the locals bring up noise pollution. 
Greetings, Anne. Hi. Hi. Today, nice to Anne Sardrill is meeting Hello. Caroline Schaffer, a local environmental activist who is opposing a new copper mine project. I understand the value. Where we need to be making better choices and more informed choices. And there are simply some places you should not mine. This afternoon, they are visiting the site of the future mine. According to Carolyn Schaffer, this project would use the area's already scarce water resources. As the car approaches the mine under construction, the landscape changes dramatically. These aerial images obtained by the association show the extent of the works. The activist is also interested in sound. She fears that the noise from the mine will affect the life of the animal inhabitants. You are hearing traffic behind us with vehicles and whatnot now. And there, that will increase instead of decrease. The wildlife that I have always observed, they hear me coming. So their hearing is extremely acute. It's their early warning system. So any of these noises are going to be an immediate impact for them. I am, I am very concerned. Analyzing landscapes makes it possible to study how animals live with these nuisances. Here is a recording made in the city a few days ago. Luke Barbaro uses a spectrogram. Each sound has a specific frequency. The lighter zone at the bottom corresponds to urban noise. The vertical oscillations represent birdsong. What is interesting in this suburban sound is the coexistence between anthropic and biological sounds, particularly during the day. In the 24-hour cycle, we can see that birds adapt their vocal activity to the anthropic conditions. Normally, in urban traffic, for example, they shift their morning singing peak so as not to coincide with noise pollution during rush hour. The investigation in Arizona is ongoing and will take several years. By comparing the data recorded with anthropological background work, the team hopes to gain an in-depth understanding of the territory and all of its inhabitants, whether human or animal.